When you log in, you first land on the consolidated dashboard, which you're seeing here. On the left, there is navigation of the different dashboards available. Right now, this is the fleet view, which is a summary of everything going on in your fleet. You can expand out the aircraft view and look at the different tail numbers you have available to you, as well as link to the various services and alternate portals that are available. The left navigation can be collapsed and expanded with this menu in the upper left corner to give more real estate. And then if I go over to the far right corner, we have the login and out mechanism, as well as being able to change the theme to light and dark. And then another app switcher, which jumps to and can take you directly to the sub portals that feed up into this dashboard. So right here, we're looking at a dashboard of a fleet that has multiple aircraft flying around. There's one in the air that's directly in the middle. But if you look at the right side with the fleet status, we see a summary of all of the aircraft tail numbers, as well as some of the states that they're in. So we can see that there are some here that are parked and it gives you the location of where they are parked. Any one of these rows I can click and it will zoom in on that aircraft. So I can click this and it will zoom in the map to match that route of flight for that aircraft. The fleet status also gives some information about this particular flight such as in this case it gives city pairs, estimated time of departure next to actual time of departure, as well as the estimated time and route next to the remaining time and route. So this one has three hours and 26 minutes left in flight. Then it has the ETA based on the plan, but the ATA won't show up until after it lands. Over on the far right side, there are the services available. So this aircraft has Wi-Fi on and it's green, meaning it is properly working. So it is up and streaming right now. There are some indications that show up on the map as well as on the fleet status. Like this one right here, we can see this had a destination change. So they clearly diverted in flight or had a known change in destination that they requested in flight. Down below are some uh, different tiles that summarize what's going on for the fleet based on the different services that you're subscribing to. Right now for this operator, it does not have active subscriptions for database services, flight planning, or data link, but they have cabin services. So what they're seeing here is essentially everything summarized for their cabin. They can customize the dashboard and remove those tiles. So if I wanted to go look at more detail with this aircraft here in the middle, I could either go search on the aircraft dashboard here in the left navigation and find that aircraft, or I could simply select the aircraft in the middle of the map and be able to go jump directly to that aircraft dashboard here. Now that I'm on the aircraft dashboard page, the map filters out all of the other aircraft and zooms in on this particular flight. If I wanted, I could layer on radar, which right now shows US domestic radar only, as well as I could I could put on the Jet Connects JX coverage maps, which will load on the map so I can see where the coverage map is along the route. So now I have logged into a different account and we see an aircraft that's actually in the air, as well as we see some alerts. So right now there's this aircraft in the air here and we see that there is the dash line representing the flight planned route versus the solid line representing the actual route flown. The color of the aircraft is also different indicating that it is in flight. Over on the right I have two examples of notifications that tell me that something happened on that flight. If it were a more urgent notification, it would be in an orange color. Something like cabin connectivity loss would be considered an urgent notification and would change to an orange color. I also, in the fleet status, see a progress bar of the actual aircraft. This allows me in my customization capability that if I don't want to see the map or I want to put these in different places, you still get a representation of what is happening between these two tiles, but just in a different view. On the right, I see the service that we have available. Right now for this configuration, 
We have only the cabin connectivity showing, but they would also show data link, intrusion detection, flight planning, and other services that would be available here all for linkage. Right now, what we're witnessing is an aircraft that just lost connectivity for some reason. So I got an orange alert. The aircraft is flashing on the map now, and the line on the map turns yellow with a dot indicating when the connectivity outage occurs. If I hover over that dot, it tells me a little bit more about what happened. Now, right now, likely they're going between two different beams, and so that's why it occurred. Although, as I look here at the overlay, that's not exactly what I'm seeing. So I would want to investigate what's happening here. I'm going to turn off that layer. What I do is select that aircraft, go to the aircraft dashboard, and it's going to focus in specific on that flight and figure out what's going on. I can use this cabin connectivity tile down here to do some investigation. The green line right now indicating the altitude, so I'm going to turn that off. I'm going to let it refresh a little, and I'm looking at where we at now. This is happening pretty much in real time, so it's going to take a second for us to get the data that we need in order to troubleshoot properly. So as I start turning off some of these other layers, I can start seeing, are they actually receiving information? Sometimes these outages are momentary and the actual passenger isn't disrupted. But the beauty is I'm able to go through here and immediately look at the information very, very quickly and start making some of that termination myself. So let's see, which one of these do I want to turn off? So I can shut off this light green one and let's see what it shows. Okay, so here we have the new Honeywell Forge business aviation dashboard product. This is a consolidation and a single view of everything that we had previously go direct services are now part of Honeywell Forge and are being displayed in a single dashboard view. So right now I am logged in as an operator who happens to have all of our services. And so that means all of these tiles within here are populated with different types of information. And I'll go through that here in a minute. They also by default get our flight tracking powered by ADSB position data. And that's default for any customer. The first dashboard here is a high level summary of everything going on with your fleet. There's the map, there's the fleet status, as well as the below different tiles relative to connectivity alerts. You have your database status where you can see when the next navigation database is coming out through both ASDS and INDS, and which includes your navigation database, your chart, and your terrain database. There's also a list of flight plans that come from our flight planning system. Right now there are a series that have been filed or pending filing. And then you also see data link messages. This operator doesn't have any aircraft in the air. And so they aren't seeing any active data link messages right now. As you're navigating around this dashboard on the far left, there is a navigation panel, which right now it's expanded. You can collapse through the upper left corner and be able to still use the navigation, but not have it clutter the whole screen, or you can leave it expanded open. There's also over on the far right, an app switcher, which will propagate across all of the legacy sites so that you can continue to get back to the Forge dashboard, but it also allows you to go directly into those legacy site portals in case you want to dive deeper into some of these areas of information. So we also enabled a customization capability within the dashboard. If I'm in this upper right here and I select customize, you go into customize mode where now I can make this view whatever I want it to be. So I can drag pull over any of these tiles, create a format that works for me and my job and my operation, deprioritize some areas, reprioritize others, depending on whatever you want. And right now I'm just dragging them into a completely random format, looking at the flexibility that you can do, grabbing any corner, making it larger. I'm just gonna cancel this. I could save it and it would retain this view, but I'm just gonna cancel right now so I can go back to the default view. Okay, so right now I'm looking at a fleet. Everything's on the ground, which I immediately know because the color is a gray color. If it were blue, you would be able to see that aircraft's in flight. There's also a quick cheat sheet up here where you see the fleet. I have a fleet of six right now and zero are in route and six are on the ground. 
In addition, correlating that to the fleet status over on the right, you can see uh, the full list of your aircraft that you have in your fleet, and then the last known location that they're in. Right now, since there's nothing in flight, they all have the aircraft over in the parked location, and none of the services are turned on. So if I'm looking down at the four tiles at the bottom, I now have a connectivity tile, which gives me alerts of what has happened with my fleet when it comes to connectivity and the connectivity monitoring. It gives you a quick alert of any aircraft that are within 25% of their data usage, as well as any intrusion detections or any loss of connectivity alerts. These loss of connectivity alerts will also be depicted on the map with icons as well as in the fleet status with an icon. Next to the connectivity tile, there is a database tile giving your fleet summary of the databases available when they're coming available. Here it's telling me I have navigation database coming in 20 days, terrain database coming in about 40 days, and then charts are coming out in 12 days just gives you a high level summary. You can also click here and go directly to the INDS portal or in the aircraft focus view, which we'll get into in a minute, I can download the appropriate files directly from here. In addition, you can view and click any of these and see what aircraft or what packages you have available for each of these different subscription types. The flight plan tile shows me all the flight plans that have been filed. It also will show you in uh, red anything that has been rejected or canceled so that you can clearly see if there are changes going on or something you need to action on. Because remember, this whole view is a snapshot of what's happening right now, what needs your attention right now, so that you don't have to go dig for that information to be able to do your job. Any of these flight plans here can be selected which will take me to our Go Direct Flight Services product and pull up that exact flight plan for you. So if you wanted to update this filing, send the crew the flight package, or make an additional flight plan, you could select right here. Data link messages, this is what you'd see if you don't have any messages received within the last 24 hours. Right now that's the case for this fleet. And we will look at another fleet where you do have messages that were sent within the last 24 hours so that you can see what that looks like. All of these tiles have little blue links in the bottom right corner. These links take you to the legacy sites where that information is generated. Just giving more access and quick easy access to uh, the information that you need all consolidated within one view. So if I wanted to dive into one of these aircraft, I would click either on the map and I get, am given a menu where I have different information or different places I can go for that aircraft. I can also go over here in the left, expand the aircraft dashboard, and go pick an aircraft from my selection list. As I select the aircraft, it takes me to an aircraft focused view. This now, everything I'm looking at this is only for this airplane. It does take in account some historical data. In this particular case, this aircraft is parked out in Charlotte. If I scroll down on this dashboard, I can now see different information about this aircraft, specific to this aircraft. So connectivity status, where am I at with my usage plan, intrusion detection, everything is green, that's what I expect. The flight plans that are upcoming, be able to go between overview and details. As I look, I have a flight plan coming up tomorrow. Looks like tomorrow morning we'll be departing. As well as I can come down and look at my nav database, this now consolidates the information for a single aircraft. And here's where I have access to be able to download those databases and put them on the storage device that I need to take out to the aircraft. And we also have data link messages that were sent and received. This would include any PDC messages, DATIS messages, and as well as position reports that can be filtered out. So all of these messages are easily visible directly here. And then there's a mechanism on the dashboard that you can actually answer and send a message to that aircraft right from here. So right now I want to look at some historical data about the cabin connectivity. What it loaded here was the last flight, which if I look up on aircraft status, this right here shows me the last flight flown. This aircraft is parked in Charlotte. But if I want to go here and look at this Teterboro to Peachtree, I'm going to select that tile, that row. The map will zoom to show me that route of flight. 
and then the connectivity tile here is going to filter to show me what data, what occurred on that flight. So right now I'm seeing the green line of the JX altitude, that's actually the altitude of flight, which is pretty cool to see. I'm going to turn that off so I can start looking at some of the other data. The chart adjusts to show me the other line information available. I can continue down in the bottom here to turn off other data points so that I can filter and be able to get to see all the different data available to me and either troubleshoot an issue, check that everything was okay.